walk through the garden. Dude. Out of there, pup. Out of the garden.
Hey everybody, thanks for watching that video. Welcome back to the cabin, welcome back to the garden. Um, just wanted to make a really quick clarification before anybody leaves this video and tries to do what I just did. Um, using fresh manure of any kind from any kind of animal is not recommended for a few reasons. And one especially is E. coli. What you typically want to do is make sure that you compost manure for about 120 days so that it reaches a temperature um, that ex that's high enough to kill microorganisms that can be harmful to you. Uh, I'm not doing that in this case. I don't know how old uh, this moose manure is. Some of it it's fairly fresh like some of it was tracks I followed that came by the cabin just like a day previous or the night before and then others uh, like around the longhouse there's some stuff that was at least a year old so I'm harvesting a, a variety of ages but uh, what I'm doing with it is putting it directly in, on the garden with those potatoes and I'm planting potatoes in it. The issue with that is that um, any harmful bacteria or other microorganisms can be in that still and can uh, taint the vegetables. So two ways I'm getting around that. One is to make sure that I'm planting, um, I'm using the manure on plants that I know I'm going to leave in the ground for about 120 days. Um, maybe closer to 90 days in case of uh, the potatoes but I won't be harvesting any of those as new potatoes as the small potatoes uh, before they fully matured. Now the other thing I'm doing as a precaution is that I'm only using that fresher manure or the stuff I'm not sure of the age of um, I'm on vegetables like potatoes that I know I'm going to be cooking up to at least 140 degrees for five minutes in order to kill any harmful microorganisms on those vegetables so I, in other words i would not put fresh manure on something like leafy greens that like salads that you don't cook um, in fact if you're you know if you see the recalls often uh, for plants that have been contaminated especially with uh, e coli typically it's things like that that aren't that are eaten fresh um, and not washed properly so that's what i'm doing but uh, do your research on that please don't follow my um, example or my advice on how to, to uh, use things like manure. Check with your, the FDA or any other agency, agriculture agency in your area to see what they recommend or food uh, protection agencies. So the other thing is that I plant the potatoes down along the stream like I did uh, plant the other stuff last year. Other stuff did not grow or didn't grow well. Some of it germinated and some didn't even. I'm thinking and I didn't really check it that closely that some of it probably rotted because the soil um, is almost constantly wet for the first month or two until we start getting a drier summer and the, and, uh, the ground um, water uh, uh, lowers. Um, but we'll see. I planted those potatoes and it was pretty wet so I think what's likely going to happen is that they're going to rot before they sprout enough to start growing um, with the roots being a constant um, uh, contact with the wet, with the water from the stream. Now it's a shame because it's really really rich soil down there. All uh, lowlands typically like wetlands have a lot of nutrients not only because there are uh, lots of plants grow in those and then decompose but also all the soil and compost and nutrients from the surrounding area funnel down or wash down into these valleys and into the streams and then they where they slow down in places like wetlands or slow moving water like I have, it settles and you get this rich, thick, rich um, uh, bed of uh, silt that's really high in nutrients. Um, so the problem is up where I am is that it's very acidic. So it's not great for growing for that reason. I need to put a lot of uh, potash or wood ash, so ash from my fireplaces on that to make it um, more suitable for growing unless I grow acid loving plants like potatoes so i w that's why i'm trying those this year down there um, like i said i'm not ha expecting great success but it's a good trial and i know that the proper way to grow in that area is to do a raised bed on top of that soil but uh, how am i going to get soil down there it's not easy to access and it probably isn't worth my effort um, on the other hand it is probably a good spot to do a hugel culture bed like i've done here behind me here and um, behind the garden be, that's sort of behind the sauna which is likely where I'm putting the greenhouse I started putting logs down there so it's basically going to be raised bed with all these rotting logs there here and 
that would be a perfect solution to go along that stream to raise that up let it rot let it become soil that's not sitting right in the water and um, grow stuff still that's suitable for that kind of those uh, that acidity down there in the growing environment but also and the moisture that's available that I don't have easily ex as accessible up on the higher land here um, but uh, we'll see we'll see what I can do down there it's, uh, that's a long-term plan I don't think it's essential that I grow stuff down in that area now the other thing is I have some asparagus roots coming I'm not sure hopefully the end of May or something that I can go pick them up but um, there are something that likes a city and I've seen them grow in areas like that that have escaped backyards or gardens or uh, agricultural properties where the, they become wild and um, thrive in these low wet acidic areas so uh, I'm gonna try that and I think it might work anyway that's what I wanted to just remind you of give you these safety precautions uh, before leaving the video if you wanted to try something like this it's challenging growing stuff in an environment like this. I don't have easy access to um, agricultural uh, pro byproducts like manure and straw. It's an effort to get straw in. So I'm gonna continue just to utilize what I have here around me and try to get, make this a real forest garden where I'm actually have sort of hacked the garden out of the forest. And now what can I use of all these natural um, products that, are, that I'm blessed with? All the wood, all the leaves, all the soil and the other plants uh, what kind of green manures can i grow successfully so i don't have to bring in an animal manure so these are the things i'm going to be learning over the next couple of years as i develop more of our food self-reliance along with the fish and game and and wild edibles that we're able to harvest here and speaking of hunting and fishing and wild edibles i did harvest uh, one of the two turkeys that i'm allowed to hunt this year or to shoot this year um, so if you're interested in that kind of thing, I think uh, probably two or three days from now I'll upload a short video on that hunt and how we're utilizing the wild turkey uh, food and otherwise. So, um, and if you're not interested in that, I don't show much. Uh, it is YouTube and, uh, and I'm careful about what I show on camera. And it's also extremely hard to film this kind of thing on my own. I've been gardening for years but I'm not an expert I'm um, relentless though in my learning process I'm trying to educate myself on everything I'm doing now that I'm getting back into trying to grow all my own food in addition to what I forage hunt and fish I'm going to uh, learn as much as I can and keep trying out new things and this forest gardening is new to me too I'm not make, just I gotta say I really love that and that uh, I don't know, it's a deep connection with nature when you get to see these small things that you've nurtured grow into something um, mature and edible, in this case with vegetables. And I see with this rain and the warm temperatures we're getting the last couple of days, starting to get some stuff sprouting on the Hugel culture mound. So I'm thinking that by the end of the week, probably next week, next video, I'll be able to show you some plants growing up pretty good. You know, we do have some starts in the cabin as well at each of the windows. It's so congested in there. I haven't been able to film much inside the cabin. So tomatoes, lots of tomatoes, because we do a lot of tomato sauce. Um, and I'll be de dehydrating uh, tomatoes as well. Um, what else is pepper started in there? Cantaloupe, a um, bunch of herbs and stuff like that, spinach. But a lot of that, some of the stuff is I'm going to get into the two gardens and get it covered over when we get frost, because we are still probably a month away from our last roast anyway interesting trying this stuff out and learning again and and uh, becoming more self-reliant here on the homestead so thanks for following along i hope you're learning something from me or hope you're enjoying at least uh, being entertained by what we're doing here <laughs> the successes and the failures so i'm gonna get back to work in the garden i've got a lot to do so thanks for watching i appreciate it and i look forward to seeing you at the kevin next time take care